Hello everyone, welcome back to my weekend updates. Now this last week I've been a little bit more focused on the rewrite, but I have done a little bit with regards to the public codebase that I intend on pushing a, a, bit, a bit sooner. So if we take a look, now we still have the same building mechanics as before, where we, can, where we can edit the terrain with any type of block we want. Still my UI has these just these eight selections, but um, I changed it so that just for testing purposes, instead of placing logs when I right click with the log, it actually places trees. And the leaf block, because I um, was too lazy to update the UI, I made be a 3D model that I loaded in. So this is Suzanne from Blender. So I can uh, place as many of those as I want. I can even e decrease the limit on the place speed to make it instant. And here, the reason this looks like this is because when I place something here, it's gonna place it as if it's uh, in that position. <clears throat> but obviously I can't put anything, uh, it's not gonna put anything on top of it. So it's just gonna be clamped on the top of the world. And so that's what we see. We see I hold down right click and it just zooms right up to my face. And then I can move it around because now there's a big plane of blocks that I can place on top of. And another thing that I added into the public version was um, that AO that I showed before that I put into the rewrite. Um, and most, if not all of the um, features that are currently in my private branch, I intend to put into the public version. I just I want to develop them first and then I'll put them out there. Another thing you'll notice is that there's a little bit of fog now, or at least a little bit of haze that appears as you get further away from the world. And I think this looks especially good. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. I think this looks especially good on, on the custom objects. So if I put the monkey there and I pull back, I think that looks pretty cool. Now, what have I been doing in the private version? So one thing that I've done in the private version is um, I have actually devised a completely new way of, of accelerating the voxel rendering. And that's something that will, uh, I, I will go into detail in in the AMA video that I am working on. But the gist of it is that I basically do a low resolution depth prepass for the voxels with some assumptions that are made about the size of the voxels to make it so that I can start the uh, ray trace from a point that is further away from the camera. Therefore, it only has to it has to traverse a smaller amount of the scene. So, if I were to go into the code here, I offset the ray origin by a uh, starting depth, which I pre-calculate um, at a low resolution, and then. I can just trace from there. If I wanted to, however, just take a look at what that looks like. Let me go into the draw here and say that the output color is the depth. So this is what it looks like as just the raw depth, but at the high resolution, I can also show if I don't add on to, to the depth, the initial depth that the ray starts at, just the distance that the tr ray traveled, then we can see that the ray doesn't have to travel nearly as far to calculate the m majority of the pixels. And that's a huge savings. Now that I have shadows off, I'm getting a higher frame rate. So we can see 300 frames here. If I come back and I turn off this start depth, just comment it out, we can see how much performance it was at before, 170, 180. So making the ray not have to traverse as much drastically increases the performance. And again, I'll go into that into detail for that with the uh, AMA vi video. Another thing that I just started toying around with today, so I haven't even looked into it very much, is audio synthesis. I'm a little bit interested in being able to play sounds from C++ because it, it'd be nice to have some sound effects in the game. So I can um, go ahead and run this. This is just a 100 lines sampled straight from libsound.io and you can hear that it's playing a sine wave. 
that sine wave has a pitch of 440 hertz, which I believe is an A4, but I could also change it to be a sawtooth wave. And this one's a little bit uncomfortable, so warning. And I could also have a square wave. This one's a lot better. And lastly, <clears throat> if I wanted to, I could combine them all. So the last thing I wanted to mention is that I may not be releasing a video next week or um, for a couple weeks because I am going to be moving. And if I can, I'll be trying to make the AMA video or finish it up. But the AMA video should be the next video that comes out. However, it might take a little while because I'll be moving. All right. Thank you so much for watching.